The Xiaomi 14 series is finally, finally here. After first being launched in China late last year and uh, let me get you in on a secret. Come close, come close, come close. I've already been using it. And not only have I been using it, I've been really impressed by it too. This is the new Xiaomi 14. Well, kind of new. The Xiaomi 14 itself technically debuted back in October last year, being one of the first devices to be powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. It's also one of the first devices to get Xiaomi's new Hyper OS software. But before all of that though, I just want to say, this is a really pretty smartphone. Just about everyone now is going for the whole flat sides look and the Xiaomi 14 is no different with a glossy aluminum frame and a glass back. Our unit here comes in this gorgeous jade green colorway too, giving it the kind of premium appeal that Xiaomi is certainly going for. Now, one common remark that people have told me whenever they see me using the Xiaomi 14 is that camera bump's huge, especially considering that this isn't the largest smartphone out there in the first place. In fact, the camera bump here is noticeably larger than the one on my iPhone 13 Pro Max that I daily drive, and also larger than the iPhone 15 Pro Max, giving it a little bit of a top-heavy vibe here. I still like it though, and in general, I prefer squared-off camera bumps anyway instead of the large circular ones. Also, while certainly not a compact flagship, the Xiaomi 14 is actually quite comfortable to hold and use as a daily driver. Even with its glass back, it's not slippery by any means and isn't too heavy either. One thing I do have to point out though is that if you're going to use the Xiaomi 14 without a case, you know, to show off that beautiful jade green, you will likely be finding yourself wiping away the fingerprints on the back panel every couple of hours or so as it really is quite the fingerprint magnet. The IP68 dust and water resistance rating though is another nice touch. Now, do I think it's the best looking smartphone this year? Probably not, as I actually like the matte finish on the ROG Phone 8 Pro more, but this is certainly in the top 3 for me right now. In terms of display, you're looking at a 6.36 inch OLED display with 2670 by 1200 p resolution, peak brightness of up to 3000 nits, refresh rate of up to 120Hz, full coverage of the DCI P3 color gamut, and more. In short, the screen is as you would expect from a flagship smartphone with high pixel density and clarity, along with the ability to go bright enough for easy readability even under direct sunlight. As for audio, the Xiaomi 14 comes with stereo speakers that aren't particularly impressive. It gets reasonably loud, sure, but it does end up being a little hollow with little oomph in the audio, especially at the low end and the top end, and little in the way of spatial sound even though it comes with Dolby Atmos certification. One surprisingly good thing though has been the haptics. Xiaomi claims that they brought a customized version of the high vibration X-axis linear motor from the Xiaomi 13 Ultra to the Xiaomi 14, and I'm inclined to believe them here. Haptics isn't always the first thing people care about, sure, I mean, but if you're gonna go for a flagship experience here, even the little things like the vibration tells me that Xiaomi have put a lot of care into their latest smartphone. Under the hood is, of course, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, with our unit in particular packing 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. It also comes with HyperOS out of the box, Xiaomi's supposedly more human-centric operating system that was a result of the Chinese giant merging their smartphone and IoT Vela platform together. Despite the underlying changes though, if you're familiar with MIUI in the past, you'll probably find HyperOS mostly the same, with a couple of tweaks in design and layout here and there that really should be no problem getting used to if you use the Xiaomi in the past. You'll still find the same split notification shade and control center for example, the first iteration of which I experienced myself when I was still using my Mi 9 as a daily driver. 
Together with that high refresh rate display and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 SoC, day-to-day -day usage of the Xiaomi 14 was generally speedy and responsive, with no real moments of lag to speak of. If anything, the HyperOS animations when navigating around were especially nice to the eye and again, gives it the feeling of responsiveness. There's no real surprise here about its capabilities in gaming either, as the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is more than capable in playing even the most resource-intensive games. I do want to point out though that longer stretches of gaming will sometimes make the Xiaomi 14 fairly warm. However, that will cause enough trouble to the point of the device crashing in my hands or anything of that sort, but it's definitely something you will want to keep in mind. There are, however, still some oddities and bugs with the Xiaomi 14 and HyperOS though. The most noticeable one for me was when my Spotify widget in the notification shade disappearing and being replaced by the default music player even though I never used the default music player in the first place. Then there's the case of videos being chopped in half sometimes when I go into full screen mode. Though, in fairness, that could have been a bug with the YouTube app in the first place so I'm not willing to fully blame HyperOS for that. And also, you still have a fair bit of bloatware pre-installed here, as other than Xiaomi's own version of apps, it also comes with the likes of Facebook and Lazada all pre-installed out of the box. Huh? So, okay, HyperOS isn't free from bugs, nor is it perfect, but let's face it. There is no operating system left that's bug-free and perfect in the first place, let alone one whose underlying architecture went so much of this change. But as one of the few people in the search and chat office who actually liked MIUI over the years, HyperOS didn't actually feel that much of a huge upgrade in design or anything of that sort, but rather a subtle improvement for the user that could still use more polish to it down the line with updates. Thankfully then, there will be plenty of updates to enjoy, at least on paper, with Xiaomi guaranteeing 4 major Android OS updates and 5 years of security patches for the Xiaomi 14. As for battery life, meanwhile, the Xiaomi 14 doesn't actually come with that big of a battery, packing a 4610mAh battery a little lower than its competitors. Nevertheless, I have to say that even with regular day-to-day -day use and the brightness oftentimes just over the 50% mark, the Xiaomi 14 comfortably lasted me a full day of use with about 20-30% to left by the time I hit the bed. Okay, so we now come to the part where I've been the most impressed with the Xiaomi 14. The cameras. As you've probably heard or noticed by now, Xiaomi has worked together in collaboration with Leica, resulting in Leica Semilux optical lenses being used here on the main camera. The camera themselves are a 50 megapixel main camera, a 50 megapixel ultra wide, and a third 50 megapixel telephoto shooter, offering a 3.2x optical zoom equivalent to a 75mm telephoto. The Xiaomi 14 is actually not the first Leica branded Xiaomi smartphone that I've used. That honor belongs to the Xiaomi 13T Pro. Now, in that review, I highlighted how despite an excellent main camera, the telephoto was the weak point there along with its portrait modes. With the Xiaomi 14 though, I was more surprised to find how well balanced the whole camera setup is here. The main camera itself doesn't feel too much of a change from the Xiaomi 13T Pro. You still find a fantastic point and shoot experience here. But it's the huge jump in quality on the telephoto camera that I'm far more excited about. Close-up shots are just as clear as the main camera and shooting portrait shots are especially pleasing to the eye now with great bokeh and color reproduction, something that I felt was just a little lacking on the Xiaomi 13T Pro. The short of it then is that 
it's pretty dang impressive and oftentimes I found myself reaching for the Xiaomi 14 more than my admittedly aging iPhone but still. Okay it's a brand new day and it's a brand new set apparently and the Xiaomi 14 has finally been reviewed at this year's MWC. Not yet in Malaysia though so at time of recording, we don't have any details yet on local pricing and availability. But what I can tell you is that if it wants to be competitive, it will have to be priced below the 4,000 ringgit mark. Why? Well, because the Samsung Galaxy S24 exists. Simply put, I think it will be hard for the Xiaomi 14 to find the right audience if it's priced at the same or, God forbid, at a higher price tag than the Galaxy S24. Then there's also the Xiaomi 13T Pro to account for. Arguably the best pound for pound flagship smartphone from last year that starts at just two and a half grand. Don't get me wrong though, Xiaomi 14 is a really good smartphone. And I will certainly miss it once I return it to Xiaomi. The device itself is good with an outstanding camera setup, premium design and feel, decent battery, and solid display. The software is perhaps the most polarizing part as it is with any Xiaomi, but with 4 years of Android OS updates and 5 years of security patches, at least there is hope that it can be improved down the line. Now, it's just a matter of waiting to see how much it will cost if and when it comes to Malaysia. Remember to like and subscribe for more reviews from us here at Soya Chin Chow, and also to let us know what you think of the Xiaomi 14 in the comments below. This has been Raymond, signing out.